the 1990s supermodel look can only be described as everything done. The use of highlight and contour has been around in photography since forever. In the 1970s, Wade Bandy had made it big, but it wasn't until the 1990s when Kevin Aquan came around that he catapulted into major fame. Aquan was soon able to charge something like $6,000 a day for makeup sessions and was booked for months in advance. In spite of the growing concern around the safety of tanning, tan skin was still a pretty popular look. The 1990s were a really special time where models could transition from being just clothes hangers into superstars. So where do supermodels even come from? So here's a little background history. In the mid 1800s, the first modern model is born. Charles Frederick Worth became the first designer to use live models instead of mannequins to market his clothing. Did you know that early models weren't even called models? They were called mannequins. Then about 70 years later, the first modeling agency and modeling school came into existence. John Powers opened the first modeling agency in New York City. But it wasn't until the 1940s that models became influential. The most in-demand photographers could really affect which models were in demand. They did this by requesting them. Model Dorian Lee was one of the most popular models at the time and appeared in no less than six Vogue covers. Bettina is one of the earliest cases of a model who went by her first name only. She appeared in tons of magazine covers and designers loved her. Givenchy was so fond of her that he named his hugely popular Bettina blouse after her. Around this time, black women in America weren't getting the same modeling opportunities as white women. Even though Anne Marie Wooldridge can be seen in an advertising campaign for Saran Wrap, people of color weren't really getting hired for high fashion editorial work just yet. Another 20 years go by and Twiggy catapults to fame and Verushka rises to be one of the most prominent models of the 1960s. Naomi Sims also becomes the first black model on the cover of Ladies Home Journal. As we approach the 1970s, Lauren Hutton signs the first exclusive cosmetic contract with Revlon. Since then, the beauty exclusive has been a big career milestone for many models. And of course, one of those famous faces of the 1970s was Gia Karanji. After signing with Wilhelmina Models at age 17, Karanji was making $100,000 a year by the time she was old enough to buy a pack of cigarettes. Sadly, Gia succumbed to a heroin addiction, and by the age of 26, she had died from AIDS-related complications. In 1975, Iman was discovered by Peter Beard. He spotted the Somalian beauty on the street of Nairobi, where she was studying political science at university. She moved to the US and received her first gig with American Vogue. Another record-making model of the 70s is Christy Brinkley, who not only appeared on three consecutive Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue covers, but she also served as the face of CoverGirl for 25 years, giving her the longest cosmetics contract in history. Then we fast forward to the 1980s. Here we meet a teenage Naomi Campbell. Naomi Campbell gets the cover of British Elle just before her 16th birthday. In 1988, she became the first black model to be featured on the cover of French Vogue, thanks to Yves Saint Laurent. The French designer wanted to use his influence for good. He threatened to pull all his advertisements out of the magazine if they refused to put a black woman on the cover. At this time, Paulina Porzakova was also making model history. She secured what was then the highest paying modeling deal ever, landing a $6 million contract with Estee Lauder. By the late 1980s, Naomi Campbell along with Christy Turlington and Linda Evangelista became known as the Trinity. Later, they added friends like Kate Moss, Cindy Crawford, Claudia Schiffer, and they became known as the Big Six. And that takes us into the 1990s. Whew. So, in 1991, Christy Turlington signed the contract with Maybelline that paid her $800,000 for just 12 days of work each year. Suddenly, models didn't just work for brands, they were a brand. They were in gossip columns and on talk shows and in movies. Of course, you could also see them at every hip spot in town. Anything and everything that they could get a little piece of, they would. But in 1996, an article came out in the New York Times highlighting the darker side of the modeling industry, including girls being exposed to underage drinking, drugs and alcohol, you know the drill, and inappropriate behavior from pervy photographers. Even today, a conspiracy floats around about the decline of the supermodel. They attribute this largely to a quote from Linda Evangelista of Big Six fame, saying, we won't get out of bed for less than $10,000 a day. Designers and editors got sick of it and would start writing and using them less, until no group of models ever reached the same kind of influence that the big six had ever again. Now that doesn't mean that models don't still get paid a lot of money. Some models, like Kendall Jenner, still cash in around 22 million and take home a very hefty paycheck. None, however, reach the same kind of influence that the big six did. And due to some really bad behavior, who knows if any ever will again. Thank you guys so much for watching. Of course, you can always keep up with me on Instagram at CC Anderson, on my website, ccanderson.com. If you have suggestions for the next video, leave them in the comments below, 
or just hit like and subscribe and keep up.